Hi everyone, this lesson is on weird or atypical side effects of amlodipine use. So we're going to talk about more rare or more uncommon side effects. If you want more information on common side effects of amlodipine use, please check my lesson on that topic. Before we talk about those weird side effects, let's talk about what amlodipine is and what it does. So amlodipine is also known as Norvasc. It is a medication used to reduce blood pressure and treat anginal chest pain. And amlodipine is a calcium channel blocker, so it reduces blood pressure by blocking voltage-dependent L-type calcium channels. And by doing this, it inhibits vascular smooth muscle contractility and increases smooth muscle relaxation and causes vasodilation. So by amlodipine blocking these particular types of calcium channels, it prevents the blood vessel's ability to contract. So because it prevents its ability to contract, it causes relaxation or vasodilation. And if you allow vasodilation, you increase the luminal opening of the blood vessel, leading to a reduction in blood pressure. This is how this medication works. However, it can cause a variety of mild and or severe side effects. So some of the common side effects of amlodipine use include edema. So edema is actually going to be the most common side effect. It's going to be the characteristic hallmark textbook side effect of amlodipine use. So edema is going to be a swelling, a collection of fluid, especially in the feet and the legs. It can be pitting edema. So if we were to actually push on it, we can see a fingerprint in the swelling or the swollen area of the foot or the leg. So that's a very common, again, textbook side effect of amlodipine use. Another very common side effect of amlodipine use is a headache. We can also see fatigue and tiredness. That's another common side effect. And another common side effect is arrhythmias and palpitations. So sometimes your heart may feel that it skips a beat, for instance. So that is another common side effect of amlodipine use. These, again, are the common side effects, but we're going to talk about more weird and atypical side effects in the next upcoming slides. So let's talk about some of the weird side effects of amlodipine use. We're going to break it down by category or bodily system. So the first is going to be the dermatological system. This is going to involve the skin. So the first weird side effect we're going to talk about of amlodipine use is pruritus. So pruritus is going to be a sensation of itching. So itching sensations can occur with amlodipine use. It often can be generalized. It can be on the trunk, on the back, on the legs. This can affect 1% to 2% of patients. So anywhere up to 1 in 50 patients can experience pruritus or itching sensation. We can also see a rash occurring with some patients. So some patients have reported a petechial rash. So petechial rash is where we see these little red dots on the skin. So these red dots can be more specifically maculopapular, meaning that some red dots can be flat, so they can be macules, less than 10 millimeters in diameter. And some other red dots can be papules, meaning that they can be raised, so you can actually feel them sticking up, and they're going to be less than 10 millimeters in diameter as well. And rashes can also affect 1-2% to of amlodipine users as well. Some patients can also experience flushing. So flushing is going to be a skin reddening or a flushing of the skin. And we can also see warming of the skin as well when these kind of temporary reddening episodes occur. It can be observed on the face and the neck more specifically. And again, it's temporary. It's likely to improve within a few days of amlodipine use. The flushing seems to occur in a dose-dependent manner for taking higher doses of amlodipine. We can see flushing occurring more commonly with higher doses and for longer periods of time. And up to 3% of patients are affected with flushing. Gingival hyperplasia is also another side effect of amlodipine use. So gingival hyperplasia is a hyperplasia of gingival tissue. So gingival tissue is the gums in the mouth. So hyperplasia is going to be a growth of the gums of the mouth. So the gums appear thicker in appearance. So it can occur in some users of amlodipine, and we may see some bleeding gums in some cases. So it can look like gingivitis, and it's estimated to affect less than 1% of patients. So it's going to be more of a rare, atypical side effect of amlodipine use, but it's something that can occur with amlodipine. So when learning about amlodipine and learning about the side effects of amlodipine, we can often see gingival hyperplasia coming up. So that's something to look out for as well. We can also see other potential dermatological side effects of amlodipine use. These include angioedema. So angioedema is going to look something like this. It's going to be where lips and the tongue can become swollen. This is going to be a rare side effect, but in some cases it can become severe enough where the tongue may become swollen enough where it can block the airway. So something to be aware of. We can also see erythema multiforme. So this is going to be the skin lesions on the shins of the legs. 
And again, all of these are very uncommon or quite rare, in fact. So again, they are possible, they've been reported, but they are going to be very rare side effects. The next category of side effects are going to be gastrointestinal side effects. So these include nausea. Patients on amylodipine may become mildly nauseous or become mildly nauseous more commonly than they used to before they started taking amylodipine. It is not a very rare side effect, actually. It can occur in 3% of patients on amylodipine. Abdominal pain is also another potential gastrointestinal side effect that occurs in 1-2% to of patients. It's often going to be diffused abdominal pain. It's not going to be in any particular area. We can also see bowel habit changes occurring. So these include constipation and or diarrhea. There can be constipation or diarrhea or both. This is going to be something that's been rarely reported. Less than 1% of patients have reported this as a particular or potential side effect. We can also see anorexia occurring. So anorexia is going to be this the term we use for reduced appetite or weight loss. Again, this is a rare side effect. It's been reported in less than 1% of patients and weight gain can occur in some patients. So it has been reported that there can be reduced appetite and weight loss, but it has also been reported in other patients where they can have weight gain. So again, rare side effects, but they have been noted to occur. Other potential gastrointestinal side effects include the following. Dysphagia, so a difficulty swallowing. Flatulence, more flatulence or more feeling gassy or bloated. Pancreatitis has also been reported as well, so an inflammation of the pancreas. And some liver issues have also been reported, although these, again, are very, very rare. And again, all very uncommon and very rare, in fact. Some of these are very rare. The next system that we're going to look at is the cardiopulmonary system. So the cardiopulmonary system can be affected with amylodipine use. So we can see pulmonary edema as a potential atypical or weird side effect of amylodipine use. So pulmonary edema is going to be fluid in the lungs, and this can occur in rare cases of amylodipine use. So we can have symptoms of pulmonary edema. These include dyspnea or shortness of breath, crackles on auscultation. So when the physician or other healthcare provider is actually auscultating, which means that they're listening to your lung sounds, with the stethoscope, they can hear crackling on auscultation, meaning there's fluid in the lungs, and patients can also experience labored breathing. And then we've talked about this before, but I want to talk about this in more detail here. Arrhythmias are a potential side effect of amylodipine use. Arrhythmias are often going to be a more common side effect. So heart palpitations, again, can affect up to 4 to 5% of patients. And some of the types of arrhythmias that can occur include atrial fibrillation, VTAC or ventricular tachycardia, bradycardia and tachycardia. So bradycardia and tachycardia can occur as well. Bradycardia is going to be a heart rate less than 60 beats per minute. Tachycardia is going to be a heart rate greater than 100 beats per minute. These have all been reported with amylodipine use. Heart failure has also been reported as well with amylodipine use. So if there is an underlying heart failure, it can exacerbate heart failure. So it may worsen anginal chest pain symptoms in rare cases. We mentioned this earlier on in the lesson that amlodipine can be used to treat anginal chest pain. So you may think this is a strange side effect, but it can actually worsen anginal chest pain in some cases. So it's also something to point out as well. And peripheral ischemia has also been reported with amlodipine use as well, especially ischemia of peripheral extremities. This is, again, a very rare side effect. And we may also see vasculitis or an inflammation of the blood vessels. So we can see sometimes in very, very rare cases, peripheral ischemia. The next side effect is hypotension or a low blood pressure. This is not a weird or atypical side effect. This is actually a more common side effect of amyloid being used. But I do want to mention it here because we are talking about cardiopulmonary side effects at the moment. So I do want to mention it for completion sake. So hypertension or low blood pressure can occur, especially when taking excess levels or too high of a level of amlodipine. Because we talked about amlodipine reducing blood pressure, if you're taking too much amlodipine, it can decrease your blood pressure too much. And it can especially occur or be more likely to occur when taking antibiotics, especially macrolide antibiotics like azithromycin, for instance. And because oftentimes the main goal of amlodipine is to reduce the blood pressure, if it's being reduced too much, we can often have to cut back on the dose. So it may require a lower dose. Another side effect of amlodipine use is dizziness. Again, this is not a very weird or atypical side effect, but I do want to mention here in connection with hypotension because the hypotension can lead to dizziness. So we, we can feel dizzy or have an episode of presyncope, which is again dizziness or feeling lightheaded, or an episode of fainting in some more severe cases, which is what we would call syncope. 
we can also see orthostatic hypotension. So orthostatic hypotension is where a patient sits up or stands up too quickly and their blood pressure doesn't compensate quickly enough and they feel very lightheaded from sitting up or standing up too quickly. This can be a more common side effect of many different blood pressure medications, including amlodipine. And again, the dizziness can be due to an increased efficacy of amlodipine leading to hypotension. So having too high of a dose of amlodipine, for instance. Again, this is going to be dose dependent, as is the hypotension. The dizziness, again, is not a very rare side effect. It occurs in 1% to 3% of patients. And the best way to avoid, especially the orthostatic hypotension, is to stand up or sit up slowly. Now, let's move on to neurological side effects. So these include somnolence. So somnolence is going to be feeling of drowsiness and sleepiness. So this can occur with amlodipine use. It occurs in 1% to 2% of patients, so not a very rare side effect. However, in other patients, other patients have reported insomnia occurring, so having difficulty sleeping at all. So we can either have somnolence or insomnia. Insomnolence is going to be the more common of the two side effects, but we can have either of them. We can also see asthenia. So asthenia is going to be feeling weak. This can be a side effect of amlodipine use as well. It can be generalized. So just feeling generally weak can go along with fatigue or drowsiness that can occur. So again, associated with fatigue, associated with the somnolence. So you feel like your muscles, up, maybe your upper extremities, lower extremities, or just feel weaker in general. This also occurs in 1% to 2% of patients. Some patients can also experience myalgias. So myalgias are going to be achy muscles and muscle cramps. So muscles in some cases may be tender to touch. It's estimated to also occur in 1% to 2% of patients. Dysarthria can also occur in some patients. So dysarthria is going to be a slurred speech, difficulty articulating words. And along with dysarthria and associated with dysarthria is confusion. Confusion has also been reported as a potential side effect of amlodipine use. Again, although both are going to be uncommon. Peripheral neuropathy has also been reported. So numbness, paresthesias, numbness, tingling sensations, pins and needles type sensations in the peripheral extremities, especially in the feet or the legs. Pins and needles burning sensation can also occur as well. This is, again, going to be an atypical, weird, rare side effect of amlodipine use. Less than 1% of patients can have it. And hypoesthesia is also another potential side effect. So hypoesthesia is simply a reduced touch perception. So when we touch things, our perception of it may be reduced. Again, this is going to be uncommon and rare. You can also see vertigo occurring in some patients. So feeling dizzy, this is going to be different than the dizziness we talked about earlier. This is where the room is spinning. So instead of feeling lightheaded, this is where we see the whole environment shifting around us. That's vertigo. Tremor is also another side effect that has been reported with some patients that take amlodipine. So mild tremors may occur in some patients. So it's going to be a shaking or jittering sensation. We can often notice that in our hands. And some other weird or atypical side effects of amlodipine use include sexual dysfunction. So this can occur in male patients. Often it's going to be erectile dysfunction that can occur in usually 1% to 2% of patients on amlodipine. And we can also see dry mouth occurring in some patients. So having a dry mouth, having reduced salivation has been reported in some patients on amlodipine use. And this is going to occur in less than 1% of patients. And then other atypical findings include the following. Epistaxis, which is a nosebleed, so patients on amlodipine have been reported to be more likely to have nosebleeds. Strange dreams have been reported in some patients. Hematological effects like thrombocytopenia or low platelet count and leukopenia or a low white blood cell count have all been noted in some patients on amlodipine. Hyperglycemia, so higher blood glucose level has also been noted. Hyperhidrosis, so excessive sweating and excessive thirst have all been reported with amlodipine use in some rare cases. If you want to learn more about side effects of amlodipine use, please check my lesson on the common side effects of amlodipine. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.